Hello, Rash fans. How are you? And then what happened to Monday Night Raw for September the 9th, 2024? The first hour was commercial free. No, it wasn't. There was commercials during the first hour. But the opening match was the eight man street fight. America made against the Wyatt Six with Bo Dallas as Uncle Howdy outside the ring. Very good match started off. I enjoyed it. A lot of weapons was used. Um, the Creed Brothers came out with weapons and tow. Chad Gable came out with the American flag draped over his back. The match started with Nikki Cross running, attacking Ivy Nile down. Josh delivered forearm shots, put a trash can over her. Kendall stick shots, ran, drop kicked the Ivy Nile, who was still trapped inside the trash can. At one point in the match, Dexter Loomis caught Chad Gable coming off the ropes, tossed him up in the air, falcon arrow his ass on the way down. They ran, jumped off opposite corner to the outside, delivered a top rope leg drop on Brutus Creed, who was laid out on a table to pro him for the table. At one point in the match, America made triple teamed Eric Rowan. Um, Ivy Nile was, um, news of fire extinguisher blasted in the face of Eric Rowan. He turned around, the Creed Brothers picked him up and double teamed spine buster him through a table. Then they Put stuff on top like the ladder, steel chairs, piece of the broken table, trash cans, candlesticks, just piled it on top of Eric Rowan. He got out of that, broke a barricade, grabbed it, and just ran around and knocked down every single member of American Made around the ring with that barricade. That was awesome. Joe Gacy delivered stomps to Julius Creed in the corner, and then Creed grabbed him, put him in the corner, delivered stomps as well. And then, um, America made isolated Joe Gacy because he's the weakest link of the group. That's a given. Took turns to deliver candlestick shots to him while he was trapped inside of a uh, trash can. Then they took turns to deliver candlestick shots to Dexter Loomis' back. Dexter absorbed that punishment and just cleaned house. That was awesome. America made lost the match. Bo Dallas got involved. Sister Abigail to Julius Creed. And then Dexter Loomis had a top row splash and Chad Gable to pick up the win. Then the Y6 posed. I loved it. One thing I don't get know is when you put a trash can over somebody, right? Then deliver candlestick shots. How is that hurting them? Like That don't seem effective to me, right? Like I don't understand why they do that. Let me know below the comments. Do you think that actually hurts the appointment? Where they're trapped inside of a trash can having candlestick shots? Deliver to them, or do you think it does not hurt them? Um, we had the women's tag team title match. Bianca Balor and Jake Gajo defended the titles against former champs Alba Fire, Arthur Dawn, who had a win and I'm one contenders match last week on Raw. It said Alba Mackey having a rematch cause. Good match. Bianca body slammed Alba Fire, slapped her ass, cheeks. Jay got in, body slammed Alba Fire down, did a muscle pose. Then they double team clothesline Alba Fire out of the ring. Either Dawn ran in, they double team shoulder tackle her down. Finally, Alba Fire either Dawn isolated Bianca about here. Worked on her for quite a bit. Double team top rope power bombed her ass down. Jay got in after Bianca finally made the tag. She ran in. The champs double teamed her quickly with a chop block and Sagiri kick. Then um this is awesome. Alba Fire super kicked Jade. And Jay landed in the corner, so she, Bianca made the tag. So I kind of backfired Alba Fire. That was, was cool. Bianca got in, ran, and Alba Fire picked her up, glory bombed her. And the same time, Ardon slid in and hit that pay dirt combo double team. Jay, I mean, she, I did not think she was going to make the free count save, but she did. She broke up the pin just nick of time. Some people on attendance said, no, that was a free count. But I, they show the replay. She made the save just a nick of time. But that referee's hand came down for that free. Then Jade and Bianca had that double team finisher, the wheelbarrow, barrel, into a DDT on Alba Fire to retain the championships. And then as they were backstage celebrating, they came across damage control. Kari Shane, Eos Sky said, keep those tires warmed up for us nice. And then walked away. The thought of match made no sense whatsoever. Okay, I get they were in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Bret Hart was there in that. Selena Vega, the Valkyrie came out. They take on Sony Deville, Zoe Starks, and Shayna Baszler in a six-woman tag. Now, last week, all the Valkyrie went to NXT to recruit Tana Pax. She said, I need your help. In return, I'll help you against Wendy Chu and Rosemary. So I was like, okay, 
she's going to be the mystery partner. It wasn't. It was Natalia. Made no sense because four months ago, roughly, Natalia turned heel during a match and sided it with Sonya Deville. And Sonya Deville and Natalia said, that's two of us. That's former stable as Shayna Baszler so always starts. And then Natalia was taken off TV for some reason. Now she's a face, so we're supposed to forget that she turned heel months ago. And I sided with Sonya Deville in the stable. When the match started, I thought, okay, maybe when Natalia makes a tag, she'll betray the team. But no, that never happened. Terrible match. Selena Vega started off with Zoe Stark. Zoe sent her through the rope. Sonya Deville had run a knee into the face. Then Shayna Baszler grabbed her on the outside. And Selena Vega was supposed to hurt her on her into the ring apron. But she messed up. So Shayna Baszler had launched herself into the ring apron. Then Selena Vega ran in, tagged in Natalia. She did her signature distance clothesline. Dropped some one woman on her ass, ran, jumped over, then ran, drop kicked her in the face. Then her, Selena Vega, and all the Valkyrie applied submissions on the other three. Natalia hooked in the sharpshooter on one of them, and the other two applied Boston Crab submissions. So all three members of Pure Fusion Collective, which is Sony DeVille, Shane Baszler, and Zoe Starks. They were tapped out quickly. So it was like a five-minute match if you're lucky. And I still don't know why Natalia is a face now when she could have turned heel there and still been heel. So that, you know, that was just confusing. Way confusing there. Next up, Dragon Knee of the LWO with LWO rings. I took on Judgment Day's Dominic Mysterio with the rest of Judgment Day rings. Now, before this match, Finn Balor came out Trick Damien Priest to coming out saying, I'll fight you at Bad Blood next month. And um, it was a setup. They attacked Damien Priest. He cleaned house. Like he just destroyed Judgment Day until the numbers advantage got to him. And then Rhea Ripley hobbled out with the crotch. She attacked Dominic with the crotch. And then Morgan with the crotch. And then the numbers game got to her. And then Morgan delivered with the crotch. Like, I don't know how many shots to that injured leg of Rhea Ripley. The Dominic grabbed hold of the crotch and delivered like twelve do like tw like at least a dozen shots to the rib cage of Damian Priest with it. Finally, after like a fifteen minute beatdown on him, Jay Uso runs out to make the save, chases away Judgment Day. Jay, you should yeet faster down there, man. What took you so long? Fifteen minutes, man. Where were you in the washroom, man? I'm like I don't know about you, but I if I was Damian Priest, I'd be like, what? Where the hell were you, man? What took you so long, right? So then the match happened. Fast match. Dragon Lee whooped Dominic Mysterio's ass. There was awesome, amazing kick strikes in the corner. Hit the run and drop kick in the corner. Um, super kicked him in the face. Then suddenly everybody outside the ring started fighting everybody. And that allowed Liv Morgan to sneak in, chop block Dragon Lee's leg. So Dragon Lee landed into the ropes. Dominic hit the 619. Top rope frog splash. Picked up the win. Then, Rey Mysterio challenged Finn Balor to a match one-on-one. -on -one. Adam Paris made it that the rest of the stable had hit the back. They were banned from the match. So, Finn Balor took on Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio ran. Finn Balor clotheslined him down. Stumps on Rey while he was in the ropes. Picked him up. Put him in a corner. Delivered a repeat of shoulder tackles in that corner. Rey fought back. 619 on the ropes. Snapped her Karana. Sent Finn Balor into the ropes again. Drop kicked him through the ropes to the outside. Dove over the ropes, knocking down Finn Balor on the outside. Then Finn Balor caught Rey Mysterio coming back in the ring, slingshot him between the ropes, and applied a Boston Crab submission while Rey was in the ropes. He refused to let go of the hold after the five counts. The referee quickly disqualified him. Finn Balor finally let go of the hold. Then, as they were attended to Rey Mysterio outside the ring, Finn Balor. Ran, drop kicked him into the ring post. Then drop kicked him into the LED board. I was like on two sides of the ring apron there. Then the referees finally got Finn Balor to leave. And they checked on the hurt Rey Mysterio. Um, your main event was the Fatal 4-Way. Number one contenders match. The winner will face Braun Brick for the Intercontinental Championship. We had Pete Dunn, main event Jay Uso, Dragon Off, and Braun Strowman. Now last week, they screwed up. Yeah, when Braun Breaker found it, Jay said, I don't want you to win the tournament because Samoan can't be a Steiner brother. Never will, never have, never will. 
So I kind of already knew going into this week who was going to win the Fatal 4-Way. So all throughout the night, Braun Breaker, they were trying to make the mistake, right? Fix the mistake that he was doing. So they had Braun Breaker talk to Pete Dunne, wished him luck, dragging off Braun Strowman J. You can't fix the mistake you made last week, Dudley. You can't. So going in this match, I'm like, you know main event Jey Uso is going to win it. Showing sure off, he won it. That was a given. But it was a great fatal four-way. Wow. Pete Dunne could not bend nobody's fingers. Every time he attempted to do it, Braun Strowman stopped him. Like, one point in the match, dragged it off. Pete Dunne had Braun Strowman in the corner delivering blows across the back. He just shoved each of them away. Then there were a double team minutes to Gary kicks on him. He slammed both of them down. Um, at one point in the match, Pete Dunne and Dragon Off delivered his Gary kicks on each other. Dragon Off went for a coast to coast. Jay Uso intercepted him with a super kick. That was awesome. They uh, triple team Braun Strowman at one point in the match outside. Jay super kicked him. Um, Braun Strowman landed in the corner and Dragon Off delivered a coast to coast. And then they pulled him out of the ring. Pete Dunn delivered kind of like an insigiri kick. And then they each of them grabbed him and ran and put him into the still steps. Braun Strowman fought back, choke slam, dragging off, clothesline Jay down, power slam Pete Dunn down. Then he started clearing the announce table off. As he turned around, Braun Serene came through the crowd over the barricade and splashed Braun Strowman through the announce table. So Braun Serene tested positive last week for COVID. That's why he wasn't in the number one contender triple threat qualifying match. Braun Strowman took his place. He tested negative. I read online, so that's why he was back. And it makes perfect sense for him to attack Braun Strowman because he's the guy that took his spot, right, in the tournament. And I was there for Braun Strowman. He was out for the rest of the match. Um, Jay Uso spear dragging off. Uso splash Pete Dunne. But each guy kicked out when he covered him. On um, the drag it off, Pete Dunn started working on main event Jay Uso. The drag it off delivered that ground at forearm shot of Pete Dunn. He had the match won. But Jay super kicked him in the face. Had other Uso splash of Pete Dunn. And your winner, number one contender to face Braun Break for the Intercontinental Championship down the road, main event Jay Uso. After the match, Braun Breaker came out. He held up the Intercontinental Championship. Raw and they were both of them looking at the title. I wish that the winner would have been like Braun Strowman, Pete Dunne, or Dragon Off to take away from it being obvious that it was made by Jay Uso. They could have fixed that at least. But like I said, they screwed themselves last week when they did that backstage segment. They tried to fix it with him attack, uh, talking to everybody else backstage. Um, but you can't fix the mistake you already did. But I kind of wish they would have by giving it the number one contender match. Um, winner to someone else, like, like I said, Pete Dunn, Dragon Off, or Braun Strowman, but nope, it's main event Jey Uso. Um, the only match announced next week for Raw is the New Day are going to be facing Finn Balor and JD Madugo for the World Tag Team Championships. Um, there you have it, folks. Oh, also a bad blood. Two other matches were announced. Liv Morgan to defend her Women's Championship. Against Ray Ripley and CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre inside Hell in a Cell. So that's three matches for Raw already. SmackDown Bad put on some matches. I'm not going to be happy if they have one match on the pay per view again because they deserve to have like three matches on that pay per view. Think about it. You can have Roman versus Solo Sokoa, Cody versus Kevin Owens too. Bailey has Obligate rematch clause to face Queen Nia Jax. There's some bad blood there going on, so. The name of the pay-per-view is Bad Blood, so have them have a match at the pay-per-view for the Women's Championship. Does Bad Blood have between Carmelo Hayes and Johnny C. and Amos? There's rivalry. Have them at the pay-per-view. SmackDown better have more than one match at the pay-per-view. I'm not going to be a happy fan. Um, let me know below your thoughts on my Night Raw. Have you seen it? What matches you like? What matches you didn't like? And what were your thoughts of Jey Uso waiting 15 minutes before he made the save when Judgment Day was beating the shit out of Damian Priest to Ray Ripley. Did you thought that was funny a guy did, or do you think that that was perfect timing? Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet. Bye.